It's springtime already. Can you believe it? To celebrate these lighter nights and slightly warmer weather, I want to announce a major new charity event at Strathallan starting next week. Next Wednesday, and for the first three Wednesdays in March, we at Strathallan are going to have a fancy dress themed day at school, albeit you'll all be at home online. I want to encourage you all to be really creative. I want you to dress up and have a bit of fun at the end of this term in what we are calling March Madness. Yes, it's a bit of fun, it's a bit of silliness of course, but we also want to highlight the role of a really important charity which some of you have heard about before, Teenage Cancer Trust. I want now in this chapel service to do something slightly different. I want to interview a Strath pupil about their own experiences of cancer and their contact with Teenage Cancer Trust. This for all of us is going to be a unique opportunity to hear from someone who has had personal experience and who is part of our own Strathallan community. So good morning Natasha. Morning. Welcome. Uh, can I first start by asking um, how long you've been at Strathallan? Uh, I've been at Strathallan for seven years. I've been here since prep school. Okay, so a full career at Strathallan. Yes. And tell me then from your own experience how you found out you were ill. Um, it was quite a whirlwind. It was a journey. <laughs> Um, so for quite a few months I was quite ill and I think my condition was just got dramatically worse in the space of two months or so and when was this um, so early 2019 so about April March time um, I was just gearing up to do my GCSEs which didn't help um, and I just, one day I just couldn't cope anymore and I think my mum noticed and we sent for, we got an emergency doctor's appointment and that's when things kicked off from then. Um, from then I had multiple doctor's appointments and blood tests and I met with multiple other doctors and we eventually got diagnosed which took I think from April to May, I got diagnosed at the end of May. And what was the diagnosis? Um, I was diagnosed with stage one or two Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, so pretty serious. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, it was, yeah, it was pretty serious. And did you get a lot of support? You know, what was the reaction from your family? Did you get support from them? And what about friends? And at school? Um, family, we, it was quite hard obviously because I think I spent months thinking it was just a cold <laughs> so to go from a cold to cancer is quite you know a big <laughs> jump <laughs> um, but you know we stuck together as a family and we came together and we were like we're gonna go through this together you know I wasn't gonna be alone you know um, and my friends, I, because it was around exams, which was a really difficult time anyway. So I told my friends, you know, you guys focus on your exams. Like I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. I always knew I was going to be better. You know, I, I was determined. I was like, I'm getting better. <laughs> um, so I told them to do that, but they still gave me loads of support, and I got so much support from the girls in house and other friends and classmates in my year group and just throughout the school the support okay. was amazing. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about the treatment and how that might have affected you physically or, or any other way? So treatment affects you in lots of ways. Um, I lost all my hair after just my first round of chemo which was quite unusual um, as we found out talking to different people on the ward and you know they were like oh you're only your first round in and you've lost all your hair and I had gained weight from being on all the different drugs I was on and but it was it was good changes you know because my physical appearance was and my physical health was awful 
by the time I'd begun treatment. So it was actually really good to see that my body was changing because that meant, you know, things were working, things were changing, I was getting better. And how did your friends react to your physical appearance changing and, and particularly the loss of hair? Um, it was quite a shock because um, my hair was just by my shoulders when I last saw my friends when I had left school. Um, and I cut it and I donated it to the Little Princess Trust who, you know, they supply wigs for um, children going through cancer. Um, and I had cut it to this kind of short style and it was kind of funky, it was very different. Um, and then I tried to dye it, which was a very interesting experience and involved my sink turning purple, which <laughs> mum wasn't too pleased with. But um, so I was just trying to have fun with it. And you know, that was a shock just to see me with short hair like that. And then to go from that to bold, I, <laughs> I had met up with one or two friends over my treatment and they were like, whoa, they just kind of took a moment when they first saw me and I was like, it's me, I promise. <laughs> so can you tell me about the first contact you had with Teenage Cancer Trust? So, the first contact I had was during my diagnosis. Uh, I had first met my youth support coordinator when I was an inpatient during an, after an operation, post-operation. Um, and he, you know, he just introduced himself and he was like, this is what we do. Um, and basically, because I was being treated in a children's hospital, uh, so I was on a children's cancer ward and the way the ward was, was it was just like one long room with a bunch of beds and a couple of rooms off to the side, but it was just children. It was very young kids, actually. It was quite a shock to see. It was very like, whoa, okay. <laughs> um, and a lot of the time I would be the only teenager on the ward during my treatment. Um, and when I was being diagnosed, when I was having my, po when I was after my operation, you know, I was the only teenager on the ward at that time. Um, but luckily, because of Teenage Cancer Trust, I got a room to myself okay, um, in this. It was very cute. They call it a hub. And it's like, it has a little room and it has a couple chairs and an Xbox and a TV. And it's just for teenagers, you know, none of the little kids are allowed in there. It's quiet. It's away from the smaller children. and <laughs> It's away from all that chaos I suppose and it just lets you be by yourself which is nice and you know it's lonely but it's nice. <laughs> so it obviously fills a real role there in terms of giving you some, something tangible whilst going through treatment. Yeah. So, a worthwhile charity. Um, have you, um, at, at, at this stage as we talk 2021, are, are you clear of cancer now? What's the prognosis? What's, um, what's happened with your treatment and your cancer and everything else? Yeah, so I finished my chemotherapy in October 2019. So it was a short but hard stunt of chemo. Um, but I have been, I'm over a year in remission and I'm really good health. So. I'm pleased to see that. Thank you yeah. very much for doing this today. One final question. Have you taken your involvement with the charity uh, any further? Yeah, so I still keep in contact with the group of teenagers I know through Teenage Cancer Trust um, from because they hold pizza nights and during chemo. I would go once a month, just meet with other teenagers who had gone through or were going through treatment. And we would just laugh and talk. And that was, you know, that was around teenagers rather than these little kids on this children's ward, you know. So Teenage Cancer Trust, they brought us all together. And, you know, it was really nice to meet people my own age who understood and we could laugh and make jokes that others probably wouldn't understand. Um, and 
but from because we that's all virtual now which is a shame but you know we still keep in touch and I still have a lot of friends through that but I'm now part of Teenage Cancer Trust Youth Advisory Group and we just help the charity in their kind of business workings and you know as young people we effectively tell them this is a good idea you know it's the young people it's the people yeah it's the young people behind the charity you know okay fantastic <laughs> and, and obviously as a school now we're going to embark on this March Madness idea <laughs> and are you looking forward to that looking forward to having a bit of fun and trying to raise a bit of money yes <laughs> I think it should be interesting to see what everyone comes up with okay and, great Thank you very much for your time and I'm glad to see you're so well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>